Hi everyone! This is Carla from Carla Being Crafty and you have reached my channel that is mostly about cross stitch but um, I may throw in a few other things here and there. Um, welcome if you're new. I'm glad that you found me. If you are returning, um, I can't thank you enough for, for supporting me and coming back and watching my little ramblings. Um, I moved my camera a tiny bit today so that you could see the diamond painting I did of my dog Frodo. Um, I talked about him last time, so I thought that um, some of you might be interested in seeing my baby that I lost in January. Um, anyway, so welcome. Today is Sunday, uh, July 13th, I believe, and this is my third uh, regular floss tube. I did do a demo, um, a short little demo video last week. So, um, several of you watched that. I've gotten great comments on everything. And uh, let's just get into it today. So today, as I said, is Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday, and it was one of the Stitchy Saturdays in the Southern California Cross Stitch Group. I believe I mentioned before that um, there are different meetups all over Southern California, from you know out in Riverside, Temecula. Well, I guess those are two different areas, but um, out towards towards that direction they go all the way down to San Diego and then there's people who are up way farther north than me um, so there's more than one every Saturday um, so that there's a good variety for wherever you live that you hopefully will be able to get to at least one of them during the month and um, I am lucky enough that there are three that are in a reasonable distance for me within half an hour so last uh, yesterday, I went to um, a fairly new one in Irvine, and we were actually at a new location because we had been meeting at like an outdoor food court, which was really nice, but the weather has now gotten into the 90s in Orange County, um, and uh, no, <laughs> there's no sitting outside when it's like that. So we went to a, a Panera in Irvine, and there was... Um, uh, I was there with two other ladies, and it was it was a lot of fun. It's fun to sit there and stitch and talk and gossip and eat a bagel, and um, we had a good time. Um, one of the people that I was there with, um, I have been negligent about mentioning her because um, I have bought a couple uh, things previously from her Etsy shop, but while I was there yesterday, I picked up a couple um, scissor fobs from her, and I wanted to make sure to mention her. Um, her name's Jennifer uh, Bartolucci, Jen. She's really nice. And um, I'm gonna show you her business card on Etsy. What are you doing, studio? I hope that focuses. Come on, focus. There, yeah. Okay, and I got two really cute scissor, uh, scissor fobs from her yesterday. Um, there's one. But this this penguin is just adorable. I'm not even that big of a penguin person, but I just he was so cute. I couldn't not. And then I got this pretty green one with a mushroom. And um, yeah, she does some really cute little scissor fobs, and she has some cute needle minders as well. Uh, some sparkly ones that are pretty, and a bunch of different stuff. I have actually one needle minder from her that is a watermelon slice, um, which is perfect for summer. And um, so anyway, I wanted to make sure to mention her, give her a shout out. And if you're in the market for such a thing, then do look her up on Etsy. Again, it's what are you doing with no G. Okay, so um, first things first, finishes. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is actually not a new finish. This is an old one I did actually probably about six weeks ago but I did talk to you about this in my first video this is the tote that started it all the plastic canvas tote that I made for my mom and um, was enjoying the process of stitching on it so much that I decided to you know get a couple small kits a cross stitch kit a needlepoint kit uh, from Amazon and yada yada yada. Here I am, <laughs> several months later, doing floss tube. So um, I did borrow this back from my mom, so you could see it. I did make a couple um, changes. 
So the pattern originally called for five, uh, five different cats. And, um, and you were supposed to do cats for the sides, cats for the bottom. And that just made no sense to me. Uh, first of all, there's 12 squares on a side. So I didn't understand why they were doing five cats. So I added the white one. So basically I just copied the black one and I just changed the colors around. Um, the other thing was is that it did not make sense to me to do all that work for the bottom. So the bottom I just used whatever was left over at the end. I did a stripey thing. And then I wanted to do something um, different for the sides. So I made these, these little patterns and just used like the extra bits of thread as I was going along. Um, the other things that I did that were slightly different were um, I added these little tiny bells on the collars of the brown cats just because I thought they were cute. Oh, my air conditioning is going off. There we go. Um, and these were these little ribbons were in the kit, so I didn't add those. Um, the other thing is is that the handles. The direction said to like glue the handles, which to me made zero sense because I was just afraid they would pull out right away. So I did stitch them in and I just used like a big X over stitch and you know, so you can see it on, on the outside, but I think it's okay. But my mom loves it. Um, it's perfect for her and I am grateful for this because it brought me to cross stitch kind of in a roundabout way. So there's that finish. Okay, and the other finish I have is a real finish. I did this last night. I was up until almost three o'clock in the morning finishing this because it was one of those places where it's like, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. And you know, and you convince yourself that doing cross stitch does not take as long as it takes. So I was working on it yesterday at the, the stitching meetup and then I, I got home and I'm like, I only have this much left on the pattern. So I stayed up and did it all. And sorry, it's all wrinkly, but. So this is the Tribal Cat by White Willow Stitching. White Willow, yeah, I think it's White Willow Stitching. And this is going to be made into a pillow for my mom. So I really do like the way this turned out. This is on a lavender. Um, I know it doesn't really look, you can't see the color that well, but it is a very, very light lavender. Um, Ada, 14 count, and then I used a variegated floss a DMC color variations. Um, next time I do something like this, I have, as I said, the um, the elephant, and I am interested in doing the unicorn. Um, I think I'm I'm still going to do it like with a variegated floss, but I might do a different a different method. For this one, I just I did it in rows back and forth, and it did kind of add like a striping effect, which I like. Um, but I think next time I want to kind of try and do it like icon by icon and see, you know, how that looks because I'm sure it'll look different. And so I, I do want to try it a different way. But I do like this. I think it's going to make a cute pillow. Hopefully in the next video or maybe the one after that, I will have actually a fully finished pillow to show you. Um, but that's going to be a little adventure because I'm going to have to uh, figure out how to use my new sewing machine. But it finished. Yay! Okay, um, so let's go to my whips, my works in progress. So I did work on both of my heads this week. Um, I have North Designs. I didn't do that much on this one. I did a little, about probably that much of this diagonal. So this one's coming along. And it's funny, um, when I first started doing this, I, this was, I was working on this almost exclusively just because I was so in love with working on a full coverage. It was my first one. Um, and what's funny is I joined the um, Diagonal Stitching Facebook group. I was one of the first people to join because it's a fairly new group. Um, uh, Karen the Knittle Bug started it. And it's a good group. If you do... Uh, full coverage and you like stitching on the diagonal or you're interested in stitching on the diagonal definitely check it out because you'll get lots of good tips and you know lots of people who like to stitch that same way um, but what's funny is she started a challenge and it, I think it started June June 15th I want to say it's going until August 15th to 
she's calling it the road to 10,000 stitches and basically it's just you know a, a number of stitching challenge and you put in how much you do each week and with the goal of getting to 10,000 and I was like no problem I'm stitching on this every night and I'm doing you know a thousand a week or whatever um as soon as the challenge started I didn't work on it for three weeks well that's not true I, I worked on it for the first couple weeks but then I put it aside for three weeks at one point and it's I, I think it's funny it's like I think challenges almost had the opposite effect for me like it becomes a have to instead of a want to so um, I kind of find that interesting something I found out about my personality um, so I mean do you guys enjoy challenges I know like I I see Michelle Bendy she does a ton of challenges plus she's in the the uh, magical stitches group and she just thrives on it she has a whole book that she you know organizes everything and I know a lot of people really do thrive on that the challenge and the and the homeworks and the, all that kind of stuff and I think for me that kind of a structure almost has a, a detrimental effect um, I don't know it'll see I mean my journey is like just at the beginning so we'll see what happens but um, I actually worked actually a little bit more on this one than I did the other one this week because I finished my diagonal and even though you see there's nothing up here this diagonal is actually finished because um, I'm not stitching the background um, of this piece so um, and I don't I don't have the picture to show you but um, I'm getting into you know the hair of the fairy and this is her hand because she's sleeping like you know like that um, and then this is where the background started so that leaf kind of finished and this little bit isn't going to be stitched so anyway I was really excited working on this one because it was like getting to that goal of hitting the background so there's that one okay so I talked to you about my uh, housewarming present for my friend Tracy there I mentioned her in my third video hi Tracy um, I did kind of start the oops, there. Um, start the second part of her housewarming gift in that I organized the, the floss and um, I marked I marked the back of the you're supposed to mark the back of the uh, paper to know where just the center is to start and everything I did that I actually haven't put a stitch in it yet so that's kind of a you know I started it but but not really <laughs> okay so then my two other whips um, last week I talked to you a lot about my Glendon place and I was all excited because I finished those two the last two spiders and I started the the werewolf and you will see that they're not there anymore because <laughs> I decided to do the the next row of um, of words the 11 11 werewolves howling this is showing up backwards so I hopefully you'll be able to see it but show up backwards to me um, but anyway so as I got over here um, I noticed that the beginning of the werewolf's face was near the letters, and I, I went and looked at the, the uh, photo, oops, wrong one, the cover model, and the werewolf's knee is supposed to be next to that line, and it was the werewolf's face, and I'm like, what is going on? And I figured out what I did was, is when I counted, I was very, very conscientious about counting three times four times to make sure that I had all my spacing right between the spider to the spider to the top of his head the stupid thing I did was I counted to get over to the spider off the E but I didn't count off the top E I counted off the bottom E so everything was you know that much too low so luckily I'm really glad that I did that line and figured it out before I had too much done in the werewolf because then I had to pull it all out both spiders and whatever I'd started on the werewolf and of course that was annoying so this project got put in the naughty the naughty pile and um, so it has, it has been punished for the rest of the week and did not get worked on um, I'm not gonna leave it in the naughty pile for very long and I'm sure it'll come out this week but 
it, it did spend a, a couple days in time out because I was mad at it. Because of course, it was the project's fault that I can't count, you know. Gotta give credit where it's due. Okay, my other whip is the To Everything There's a Season. Now I know we're not supposed to show um, patterns on online, but I'm just gonna show you like a really quick little little bit because I just want you guys to see. Hopefully it'll focus. I don't think it's gonna focus, so it doesn't matter. I don't know if you can see, but this is all handwritten. Like each little symbol, somebody actually did it with a pen and then it was copied off of that. And that just blows my mind that that's how things were done. Um, not that long ago. It was like that was the 90s. So, okay. So this one, all of this is pretty much new. I think I had this little bit here, but all of this is was completed and I did start the words. And if you recall, this is uh, one of the projects that I'm doing kind of like in, in dedication to my father. Um, I have another project in mind. I haven't bought a pattern or anything, but I'm going to do, I really want to do a Winnie the Pooh um, thing because um, I have this really great memory of my dad involving Winnie the Pooh, which I will, I will go over that story when I, when I finally start that thing. But, um, but for right now, that's my project that's dedicated to my dad. Um, okay. The next thing is I had promised myself or I had kind of made a deal with myself that I, even though I was itching to start, I got a couple new kit, uh, new charts and stuff. I was itching to start something, but I was like, no, I have to complete something, which I did, the cat. Um, but I kind of cheated and I did start something in the middle of the week. Um, but this is why. I found that um, I love stitching things for myself, like totally. I, there's a t billion things I want. Um, I'm also enjoying having a couple projects that are for other people, like, you know, doing something for my mom and doing something for my friend. And um, when I started this uh, YouTube channel, um, I, you know, I told certain people about it. I didn't tell my brother. I didn't think that it was something that he would necessarily be interested in. But my friend did post uh, something on her Facebook page about, you know, my friend started a, a channel and, you know, a link to it. So I'm sure my brother must have seen that because he and Tracy are friends on Facebook as well. And um, I was really surprised after my first video when I got you know, a comment on my video from my brother. Um, I was like, that's cool. You know, he watched my video. Um, then I, I had texted him. Um, I was talking about the cross stitch a little bit and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second, but I texted him and he was texting me back and he said something. He goes, Oh, I'm watching your second video now. And then yesterday I was sitting in the stitchy thing and I was checking my my uh, YouTube and I got a third comment from him on my demo video and the comment he left seriously you guys it was so touching it was like it was just so sweet that he said that you know I'm not necessarily interested in this craft basically but I am totally gonna follow this channel because I love you and you're the best or whatever I mean it was just it was like oh my god you know and my brother and I are not really schmoopy with each other or anything but it just like I almost like got tears in my eyes when I was sitting there in the Panera because he said such a sweet thing and um, so that makes me feel really good that he's watching so hi Aaron I love you too <laughs> um, but anyway so back to my start so I was thinking about it and you know after I knew that he knew I was doing cross stitch and I thought hey you know I see all kinds of stuff on Etsy my brother and I say this with all the love in the world because I am too but my brother is a big old nerd um, loves every nerdy kind of thing that you can imagine and um, and I thought hey it would be fun to do something for him um, because there's a lot of choices so I, I sent him a message and I'm like hey if I do something for you what do you like best you know do you like Star Trek best or Star Wars or Tolkien or um, or the comics so what uh, what thing should I be on the lookout for and of course being my brother his first reaction was like oh I love them all and I was like that is completely not helpful so please <laughs> help me out so he did um, 
he did say okay and then he sent me back a cute little message and it was like you know Star Trek is greater than Star Wars and for what did he say for comic books DC is greater than Marvel for movies Marvel is greater than DC and Tolkien is always cool and Gandalf is the coolest is basically what he said so I did um, get uh, which I'll show you in a little bit I got uh, actually a couple patterns that I'm putting together and I'm gonna make like a really cool pillow for him that I'm excited to eventually start but while I was looking for that I found this other thing which I just felt like I have to make this for him as well and um, it's kind of for him and it's for his uh, his oldest son because his oldest son is learning some of his father's um, loves of of nerd culture if you want to put it that way um, I was excited about this because I am using my uh, new <laughs> needle necessities flosses, new to me. Um, so this is the pattern that I got in this house. We do ner uh, do geek. I actually think that should be nerd. I might change it because I think nerd is a little bit more uh, accurate. Um, but all of these quotes I looked on here and there's only two things on here or two references that I don't know if my brother has is interested in them or watch them one is um, I don't know if he's he watches or is interested in um, um, oh, I'm losing my words with the TARDIS uh, Doctor Who and then the other one is there's a, a quote from the Hunger Games and I don't know if he is interested in that but everything else on here I know he loves um, He's seen most of those things with me, or I've seen them with him. Um, we've got a Lord of the Rings quote. We've got Star Wars, Star Trek, um, uh, Douglas Adams, um, Firefly. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, and Harry Potter, which his kids love Harry Potter. And I love Harry Potter. So, anyway, so I was able to start that. Now, it's charted to just do black, black on white, which, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, so instead, I'm doing it kind of like in a rainbow motif. Um, yeah. So I've got my, these are my threads that I'm using, and they're kind of in rainbow order. Um, I think they're going to be really pretty. I'm going to do like the top, the top and the bottom in black, and then the rainbow going down, and then the icons I'm going to do in black. And I've got some gold touches in it as well. And I'm doing this on this, the confetti. I think I showed you guys this before. It's confetti um, fem fabric, fabric flare. So it's got these nice little speckles which kind of go with all of the colors of the rainbow flosses that I'm doing. So I have a feeling that because it's the words, it's going to stitch up pretty quick. But um, I actually enjoyed starting this and uh, so this is gonna be for my brother and his family um, but that's not the it's not the like actual official brother project oh the other thing my brother said is that if I did something for him I had to feature it on my show so I'm showing you guys the stuff for him okay so that that's my new starts so um, that brings us to like stash and haul and um, I'm only going to show you one thing that is quote, quote, stash. I mean, again, I haven't been doing this that long, so anything I have has been uh, got. Uh, I've gotten it fairly recently, but um, this is a, a cool thing. I got this on eBay, Lion of Judah. And sometimes you'll see something on eBay that is just too good to pass up I mean it, you just can't so I got this for $12 I think that was including shipping could be wrong about that but $12 it's a small little thing it's a needlepoint kit um, but the thing that's so cool about it, it comes with the flosses and these there's three skeins three or four skeins of a Verisua silk I looked them up on 123Stitch, those skeins of silk are like $4.50 each or $4.20 each. And there's three or four of them in here. And Krynik, I mean there's a whole um, spool 
of Krynik and assorted other things. So this is more than what I paid for the whole thing. The other thing that's, that's so cool about it uh, to me is um, it's very hard to find Judaica type stitching. Um, and the stuff that is out there is very similar. Very similar icons, very similar styles. Um, and they don't all appeal to me. Um, you know, and they're very like, you know, uh, Hanukkah, you know, there's menorahs and dreidels. Um, this is a subtle thing. Um, if you, you know, unless you know what it is or you recognize a menorah as a symbol or whatever, you know, it's just a pretty little thing to stitch and I just love it. I, so, um, it's gonna, it's, it's small. I think it's only supposed to be three and a half by three and a half finished, but, um, I just loved this when I found it. So, sorry about that. I got a little message. Um, anyway, so I got this a couple weeks ago or a month and a half ago or something and I did just really, I really felt like this was like the bargain of the century. So that is my stash to show you. Um, then I have a couple pieces of a new haul, I guess. Um, I ordered this piece of fabric from eBay. Um, I got a really good price on it and it's kind of a weird mix of like a brownie browns and kind of a light blue. It's an interesting piece of fabric. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm going to use it for. Let me see if it has the name on here. Um. No, it doesn't. It is a silk weaver solo, so it's kind of like a one of a kind deal. Um, but um, I got this at the shop. is called Scrap Stitching on the, the eBay shop. And I don't know if it's helpful to tell you guys the name of eBay shops because I don't know that anybody goes onto eBay actually to shop at a shop. They just look for stuff, and then whoever's selling it, that's great. Um, but anyway, the reason that I'm kind of bringing it up to you is that when I ordered this, I ordered it, I think, right before 4th of July or like the week before 4th of July or something, and I was not in any hurry for it. It was just, it was a good deal, and it was a cool piece of fabric, so I bought it. I got a message like maybe a week later, and I guess the seller had been out of town and hadn't seen the sale, and she messaged me and she was like, you know, do you still want me to send this out? You know, I didn't send it yet. I was out of town. I'm sorry. Do you still want her to, do you want a refund? And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's fine. But I'm not in any hurry for it. So she mailed it. And again, I was not upset. I was not like waiting anxiously for this piece of fabric for a project or anything like that. But I got it uh, this past couple days and there was a little note on it that said, you know, sorry for the delay. And she sent me a second piece of fabric for, for free. And I mean, it's a nice big piece of fabric. And it's a really pretty purple. So I just thought that that was really, really great customer service. I mean, as I said, I did not even ask or I was not upset. But she just sent me a piece of 14 count purple Ada. So matches my hair. So it's a great, great. So thank you very much, Scrap Stitching. Susan, I think is your name. And I think that was really great to business practices. So thank you. Um, the other fabric that I got from eBay this past week. So I went on to Joann's um, because I was thinking ahead to finishes and, you know, the pillows that I want to make, etc. Um, so I bought a bunch of... Um, supplies for that. So not super exciting. I got like batting and I got a pillow form and I got thread for my machine and um, some interfacing. And I wanted to get some fabric, you know, for the pillows. And I was completely overwhelmed on the Joanne website. Plus, it's like if you order, if you order fabric by the yard, you have to order usually like a minimum of two to five, you know, and it was like, 
I, I was really overwhelmed. And then I saw that they had some bundles of uh, fat quarters, and I thought that would work for a pillow. It would be plenty of fabric for what I need, and bundles are cool because you get a bunch of different colors. But the only ones that they actually had in stock were like yellow and brown, which are not my colors. Um, they had really pretty like teal and purple, and those all said not in stock. Um, then there was one that was like a rainbow pack, but it was like a lot and it was like 90 bucks and I was like I am not gonna spend 90 bucks to buy you know fabric that who knows how long it's gonna take me to use you know if I'm finishing a project even once a month you know I mean that's a lot of fabric that would last me like three years so then I was like what am I gonna do and I thought hey okay so I have this term fat quarter go on eBay and see if you can find anything and I did I got this package a fabric so it's actually four fat quarters and a jelly roll which I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this yet I mean I know there's such things as like a jelly roll quilt and that kind of thing but I think I can actually use the strips to make the back of a pillow and you know it would just would be like a stripped pillow like a quilt type back which I think would be cute but then I also got four four fat quarters of this purple fabric I think I'm gonna and I'm gonna use this to do the back of my mom's pillow plus it probably will be the back of um, the pillow that I make with the lavender roses um, so I was really happy and this is like um, 10 or 15 dollars so yeah actually I think it was 10 so that was I think a good good move on my part so I saved some money got the exact thing that I needed and I uh, gotta love eBay. It's dangerous, but you can get some really good things on eBay. And I got this from, um, the seller's name is Melody101. So I think she has more fabric too, so if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, you could look her up, because it was a good price. Okay, so now I'm on to my three um, uh, new patterns my new haul, if you will. Um, I got my very first uh, Nora Corbett. Um, I am not, I love Nora Corbett and Mirabilia patterns to look at. I don't know if it's something that I'm gonna really be interested in stitching, um, but, but this one, yes, it's got the black cat. Um, this is called red kitty red kitten and I have a skein of my needle necessities in red which is going to be great for the dress um, I already had the white whisper that I got for my Glendon place um, I ordered so the only things I actually ordered for this pattern besides the pattern is black whisper which I'm assuming is used on the cat for the cat and some beads um, which I'm not even sure where the beads are on this. Oh, on the bottom of her dress. So, I am looking forward to starting this one. I like that it's simple, so I'm doing a Nora Corbett that's simple. But, you know, it's everything I like. Okay. The second thing I got, um, again, I had my needle necessity stuff in mind. Um, I got this, call, it's called Tree of Butterflies by Alessandra Adelaide. And um, I was specifically looking for something that I could use the Needle Necessities over dyed flosses. And um, this is only a couple colors. So it is a dark brown for the tree. And then there's a light brown for all these like little curly cues in the tree. There's green leaves, purple butterflies, and then it uses like this peach, peach color crinic and gold beads um, in the tree also. And um, I think I'm gonna do this on the kind of lavender, the lighter lavender um, piece of fabric that I showed last week that was um, one of the mystery pieces that I got from under the seat fabrics. So 
so I am really looking forward to starting this. I just think this is really pretty. So I'm holding still to see if I can get a good screen capture. YouTube likes to pick the ones where I look really ridiculous as my pictures. Okay, and then this is the final thing that I got off of Etsy um, from Fangirl. Fangirl Stitches. So, as I said, I, I was talking to my brother about what, which of the, the uh, sci-fi, fantasy, nerdy genre he likes best. Um, and I think Star Trek is the winner. I love Star Trek too, as well. So, um, this is what I got. So, all of the little people things that you can see on Etsy, those were the ones that I was attracted to. And I found uh, this company has all of the all of the crews. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them all in like one under the other and make a nice size pillow. Um, so okay, so we've got the original crew and then. Next Generation Crew. And Deep Space Nine. And Voyager. And then I know Enterprise was on after that, but I never watched that, so I don't really count it. Yeah. Um. I probably will make a few changes on these. I don't love the way the eyes are charted. Um, they're okay, like for like some of them, but like especially if it, if the character has black hair, I feel like the eyes just kind of blend in. So I don't necessarily like that. I would like them over a little bit. Although I realize that if you move them over one stitch, it looks silly. But what I think I'm going to do is um, maybe do the eyes with either French knots or beads. Um, then I can also change the colors for, you know, if anybody has very blue eyes or, um, Dave is actually charted, I think, for yellow eyes. So I can do like a gold bead or something for him. Yeah, he's charted for yellow. Um, the other thing is, is I like that the, uh, rank stripes are on these guys, but then there's nothing on these guys, and I know, you know, they have little pips, and um, so I'm gonna see if there's some way I can figure out to add the pips. So, um, I know those are the kind of details that my brother would like. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, but if I can, I will, I will do that. So the fabric that I got for this, I ordered it. I don't have it yet. I ordered it from... Sorry about that. Um, I got a phone call and I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, which I thought was supposed to stop it from uh, accepting calls and messing up my video. Um, and it didn't work. So um, hopefully now I'm going to have to figure out how to edit and put two pieces of video together. So I guess there's going to be a learning curve today, <laughs> but hopefully I can do that. Um, anyway, so I did order fabric for this Star Trek piece. Um, it's called um, Looking Glass, and it's a light gray. And it said in the description that um, if you uh, get it on like an opalescent one, it really does look like kind of a mirror surface, which I did. So I think that that would be really cool. And then once the project's finished, um, I think I'm going to make it into a pillow with like a galaxy fabric on the back and I think that's going to be really nice and no promises Erin when you're going to get that it might be something that you get in five years but um, that is my intention so anyway I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I'm sorry about the little glitch at the end I hope that um, I can figure out how to splice these two pieces together
but um, in the meantime I hope you, everybody has a really wonderful week have great fun stitching uh, thank you so much for for watching my video um, I would appreciate it so much if you would like it and subscribe um, I was able to get up past a hundred subscribers in the two weeks that I have been on YouTube and um, which feels wonderful so thank you all so much and in the meantime, have a wonderful stitchy week. And remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. Bye-bye.